Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today is a special one. Uh, it's a fountain pen review and as you can see uh, the, the review is of the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age uh, which I have right here. I thought I'd just give a little bit of background first uh, in terms of why this is a special uh, review for me. I've always used fountain pens. I got my first uh, Parker fountain pen when I was in my teens and uh, I never really understood the fountain pen thing. I had it, I won it in a competition, I had it, I used it occasionally and it sort of was left aside. In recent years I had some Chinese fountain pens that I bought in China and some basic stationery store fountain pens that I'd sort of got in the UK and places like that. Here in Australia the options are a little bit more limited in, in a lot of stationery uh, stores but I thought I'd get something a little bit fancy and so what I did was I got um, a Lamy All Star. So my wife bought me this uh, and this for me was a very fancy pen at that point. It's an expensive pen, it was a nice fountain pen and as soon as I put the pen onto the paper I got it. I started to understand the whole fountain pen thing and so I started looking at other pens and I went through you know things like the um, some of the Pilot pens and the Platinum 3776 and things like that and started to really want to explore this pen hobby and then I saw something. This brand came onto my radar and it was Visconti. Now it first came onto my radar through uh, the Van Gogh Starry Night pen which I never ended up actually getting. I, I would still like one, I just never ended up getting it. I got the Michelangelo instead, which is a similar model, but just a plain coloured uh, barrel. And I loved it, I loved the way it wrote, I loved how wet it was. Uh, but deep down, I knew there was something that I was wanting more. Uh, and it was thanks to videos by people like Brian Goulet, that I decided I really wanted a Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. But this is an expensive pen. Um, and while I've had the pleasure of using one a couple of times and I have some other sort of more pricey pens. I could never justify buying this pen. Um, it, you know, in Australia it retails close to $900 to $1,000 Australian. So it's, a, it's quite an investment and something that um, took some serious consideration. But I decided that it was going to be a pen that I was going to own. So I got one. Eventually, I got one. I've had it now for a little while, uh, a short amount of time, but enough time to be able to um, understand the pen and know how it's, uh, know the ins and outs of it, and I love it. So says up straight, I really love this pen. Um, you're always concerned when you're buying a Visconti about the quality of the nib, but we'll go into that uh, in the um, more close-up section of the video. Um, but yes, I here is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. We'll do the full review, I'll show the uh, specs, some pros and cons, and then uh, we'll do a quick summary. So, let's talk Visconti. Here is uh, the box that the pen came in. I purchased this from Apple Boom uh, uh, Pen and in the Netherlands. You can see my unboxing uh, of uh, this parcel uh, here on YouTube, uh, so check that out on my channel. Um, this is a, as I said, this was a pen that I, it was a grail pen. It was a pen I wanted for two years and had to seriously consider buying at this price point. It doesn't fit necessarily my philosophy in that way of pens that are affordable and replaceable and all of that, but it is a pen I've wanted uh, and I think it's a pen that if I look after it and if I take you know care of sort of where it is, this is going to be a pen I'm going to have for a very, very long time. So this is the box that came in. It's not the, the boxes have changed since some of the earlier versions, um, and so yeah, I'll just sort of show you sort of what it comes with. So it's a cardboard sleeve over a a nice sort of cardboard uh, box, uh, just uh, with the lid that lifts off. Um, the logo nicely sort of uh, printed there on the top. It's a it's a lovely looking box. I do prefer the sort of the clamshell uh, faux leather one personally but this is what I got. So, take the lid off, and there is the pen. This is how it was presented. I was really surprised, actually, uh, that 
the pen didn't come with any written material. There was no sort of catalogues or warranty information or anything like that. So uh, that's a bit of a shame. I was looking forward to sort of looking through that sort of material and um, seeing about the pen and about the other models and all that sort of stuff. But the main reason for getting this, of course, was the pen. And it comes with a nice and secure in this sort of soft padded uh, box. It's really quite nice and I was very happy sort of with how it was presented. So let's talk about the pen and the parts of the pen. So one of the features of the Visconti pen range is the clip. It's designed to emulate the Ponte Vecchio uh, and in uh, Florence and I think that's a really great piece of branding. Also the actual uh, name of Visconti is uh, on the clip there. That one looks like it's sort of, um, it's not the enameled sort of uh, version that you used to get. It's sort of, I can't remember what they call that, it's printed on in some way. Uh, but it's clean and it's crisp and very clear, which is nice. Um, these are made in Italy, in Florence. They are beautifully made um, and the, the finish is just Stunning. The material is made of uh, basaltic lava sourced from Mount Etna and it is hardened with uh, resin uh, But it is this beautiful lava Volcanic rock, which is very very cool. And this of course is the bronze age. So it's got the bronze trim You can there are other finishes the steel and the dark age and things like that. So this is the bronze one This is the one that I uh, had been wanting for quite a while The cap is this uh, hook safe lock system now you can see sort of the um the threads of how that cap works there, and it's like the, an eighth of a turn to sort of get it to lock in, and it's very smooth, and it's very convenient, very easy, and very, very nice. It comes with the uh, My Pen system, which is the magnetic sort of uh, end cap um, there, which is on this one, it's just printed with Visconti, and I probably won't change that out, I quite like uh, that. Um, and it ties in nicely with the trim of the pen. It is a bigger pen and it's quite heavy. Um, we'll go into the uh, size in just a few minutes, but this sort of material does add sort of a considerable amount to the weight of the pen. I got this with a medium nib um, and it is a very wet medium. Uh, it's a two-tone nib. It's a 23 karat palladium dream touch nib according uh, to Visconti. Uh, and it's quite, quite nice. I've you're always worried when you get a Visconti about what the, the nib is going to be like. In this case, I had nothing to worry about. I had uh, Apple Boom check it out before they sent it to make sure it wrote okay. Uh, and it wrote perfectly out of the box from day one. So I'm very, very happy uh, with that. The pen does post, uh, but it makes it quite long and quite back weighted. It's quite a heavy cap. So um, I don't think anyone will actually need uh, to post this pen to write with it. It's very comfortable uh, in the hand in, at this size. Uh, as I said, with branding, you've got the Visconti on the clip, on the finial, the end finial there, um, and then also on the nib. There's also Homo sapiens written around uh, the barrel there, uh, which I think is also another, another nice touch, except for the fact that it doesn't line up. Now, I haven't taken the nib out to try and get that to line up, but this is as it came, uh, and that's, I might have to do some work on that. The filling system is a, uh, what they call a, um, a power filler, uh, and it's a vacuum power filler. So it's a, so you, unt I won't do this now because it's inked up of course, but you untwist the uh, piston knob there, you pull it out, you push it down, it creates a vacuum, it releases and ink is drawn up uh, into the pen when you have the pen in a bottle of ink. Obviously you can't, you know, this isn't a cartridge converter pen, there are no cartridges available that you can't take it apart to put it in. So it's, this is the filling system that this pen uh, uses, which I think is great. It has a good ink capacity at just over one and a half mil, so it's pretty reasonable. Let's talk about uh, the size of the pen. Um, capped, it's 146 millimeters. So it's quite a decent size. Um, in comparison here, we have a uh, Alami Safari. So you can see that it's um, a little 
longer um, than uh, the Safari. I'll try and get that all into frame for you there. Um, I also have here another Visconti. I have the uh, the Rembrandt, um, which you can also see it's a similar size to the Safari, uh, considerably you know smaller than the Visconti here. The Homo sapiens, sorry. So, uh, uncapped, it's 132 millimeters. Fits very well in the hand. It's got a lovely sort of, the section is sort of a little bit short, uh, but you don't feel the threads of the hook safe lock uh, there. Uh, but it's a nice sort of width uh, section, I think. Um, posted, it's 173, but as I said, I don't think anyone would actually need to post this pen, and it does back weight the pen ever so slightly. The pen weighs 43 grams, uh, of which 26 is in the body and 17 is in the cap. So it's not a light pen at all. In fact, there are pens uncapped the weight of this pen. There are, are many, many pens uh, that are substantial size pens that weigh less, that weigh more, uh, less, sorry, than uh, just the, the body of this pen. So let's quickly... Uh, Oh, the, the nibs. Yeah, so from one particular retailer, uh, a, a well-known retailer, I just to see sort of what was available, you, they have available extra fine, fine, medium, and a 1.3 millimeter uh, nib. So there's a good range of nibs available. You can also get, uh, obviously, custom grinds and things like that done. So lots there to sort of, uh, for any writer looking for a pen like this. Let's do some uh, writing with the pen, shall we? Just so we can see how it actually goes on the page, because after all, that's why we get these pens. Here I have some Rhodia 80 gram dot paper, and we'll just do a little writing sample here. As I said, this is a 23 carat palladium, I hope I spelled that right, dream touch nib in a medium. Sorry, just a couple of technical difficulties there. Um, as I was saying, the ink uh, in this pen is Diamine Oxford Blue, which is uh, one of my favorite inks at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's just a really great rich um, dark blue and almost sort of verging on a blue black uh, and looks great in uh, this this pen in this sort of big wet uh, medium nib now this is very broad for a medium um, it is not joking around it's you know we're talking almost broad in, in any other pen uh, this would be considered a broad just about uh, and also what we're not joking about uh, is just how wet uh, this pen is. In fact, you know, it's still wet. Um, I love how wet this uh, pen writes. Um, now, a cup, quick writing, uh, quickly just... Um, Terrible, terrible writing, but just to give an idea, it keeps up beautifully. It's smooth and wet. It's really, really, really wonderful. I don't want to push this nib because, uh, well, I like this pen sort of too much, but it is slightly springy. So you can get a little bit of sort of line variation out of it without pushing the nib too hard at all. Reverse writing. Let's be honest, in a lot of pens, that is a medium. And it's smooth and it writes well. You could easily, easily and happily do that with this pen. Now, in terms of, uh, so obviously I'm a left-handed writer, so you get a lot of the experience of my uh, left-handed sort of writing. Let's just see uh, what it says, does, how it feels uh, as a, as a right-handed writer. Can never work out how, how to do this properly. It's 
always awkward around the tripod in my other hand, but it was smooth. It, like, because we push across the page as a left-handed writer, nibs aren't designed to be written that way. As a right-handed writer pulling the pen across the page, it is just absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I really can't complain about how this pen writes. Like, you can see how well that pen writes. I'm trying to be objective. This is a pen, I'm, as a reviewer, this is what I have to do. Be objective about the pens. So I give the stats, I give the size, the weight, I tell you what the pen's made of, I tell you basic things about the shape, the trim, blah, 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 all of that stuff. In terms of the writing experience, a lot of that is going to be personal. But I think you can see here, this is a wet, broad writing, smooth nib. And in the case of this particular pen, the nib is spot on. For me, this is just about absolutely perfect. So let's talk pros and cons. Okay, the nib is smooth and wet, fabulous. I like the weight of this pen. It feels really nice in the hand. Um, it's a unique pen, like it's made of lava. So, and the design is unique. I think uh, other pen brands look for unique materials and all that sort of thing, but Visconti just nailed it here. The pen is strong and durable. Uh, it's reliable. The capping I think is great. It's secure. It's never coming off. You gotta depress it slightly, spring it in. So there's actually a, a motion that has to happen that is hard for, to do in your pocket to uncap this pen. Now I keep it in a sleeve in my pocket just because that's what I like to do, but it's really secure. The biggest pro of this pen is the massive cool factor. It is just beautiful. So, so cool. Now there are some cons. Visconti nibs are not reliable. I'm lucky with this one, but we hear the horror stories again and again of people who buy these pens and end up with nibs that you just cannot write with. So check it out. As I said, if you can get into a, a store to try these pens, I suggest that. Cleaning. It's a vac filler, so th the cleaning is tricky. You know, you're not going to be able to, um, you know, sort of just flush it out. You, it does take a little bit of sort of, bit more effort. And while this was a pro for me, for some people, the weight of this pen is going to be a con. It is a bigger pen. It might be too big for some hands. It might be too heavy for some people. For me, I like that. Now, cost. This is in, in the US, as I said, in, a, in the US, this pen uh, retails in the, well, at full retail price for around $770 to $800. It's not a cheap pen. Does the cost equal the value? Probably not. Uh, you know, I, I put up a, a, a tweet the other day uh, that the two pens I were carrying were this and a Wingsung 3003. The Wingsung 3003 costs $2 and both pens write. Yes, the writing experience is incredibly different. The pen is incredibly different, but a pen writes and this writes and that writes. So what you're getting here is you're getting a pen that is a statement. You're getting a pen that says something about your you. It's a personal thing as well as being something that you can go, you know what, this is a special item. This pen is made of lava. This is a, it, uh, you know, lovely Italian uh, pen. It's got a lot going for it, per, the personality of this pen. And I think that's what you pay for. Replacement nibs are expensive. Getting the, the pen uh, serviced is not necessarily cheap. Obviously, you know, if you go, take it to a, um, a nibmeister, you're going to have to pay to get it worked on there. So there's, you know, there are certainly cons in terms of the, the price of this pen. But for me, the pros far, far, far outweigh the cons. I really like this pen. I've wanted it for a long time. I'm so glad that after having it now for a little while and spending some time with it, using it every day, carrying it with me, I just love this pen more and more every day. And I find it less and less that I don't like about it. So if it's a pen that you're thinking about, check one out. If it's ever within your price range, and I know for a lot of people, it's just never going to be. Um, it was. I was pretty sure it was never going to be for me, but you know, you make sacrifices when you want something, uh, you convince your wife, that was probably the hardest part, and then you, you know, you, if you can, get a pen like this. This is a pen for a lifetime, um, you know, Alami Safari is nice sort of throw around pen, might last you a few years, a decade, 
however long if you look after it. But a pen like this is a pen that you have for a very, very long time and you love it for a very long time. So that was the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. Um, as I said, I love this pen. I think that uh, I'm certainly glad that I bought this pen and I'm glad I've got it. And as I said, I've been carrying it every day since I got it. Um, it writes wet, it writes smooth, it does everything I want it to do. And as I said, it's got a massive cool factor. There's a reason why this is a favorite amongst pen users uh, and why um, it has the status that it does. Now, obviously, this is not a pen for everybody. It's not a pen that's on everyone's price range. I was lucky to be able to get it at this point. Um, it did take me two years of convincing myself and uh, having a, coming to a point where the funds were available um, through saving and uh, a bit of luck. Um, but I was very, yeah, very, very glad to get this pen. Now, as I said, it's not a pen for everybody. It'll be too big and too heavy for some people, but if this is a pen you're interested in, go and check one out. Find a brick and mortar store where you can actually hold the pen, feel it, and if you can, I would suggest you write with the pen you're going to buy before you get it. Um, the Visconti nibs are hit and miss, so just be careful. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me, uh, which is linked down below. I'd love to see what you're doing over there. Uh, and if you've got any uh, products you think I should be looking at, please get in touch. If there's a way you'd like to support this channel, once again, get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you later.